Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I am Kim. I am Bonnie's daughter, also a watercolor teacher and have been for many years. And I always look forward to the times I get to fill in for the queen bee. And today I am so excited because I get to make um, a little project with you guys. So I created this very simple wreath. You can see the colors. Um, I kept it to mostly greens and a little bit of that 565 blue. And I just love how it turned out. I love the simplicity of it. I mounted it in a little card here so you can kind of see through it when you open it. Isn't that cute? If you wanted more colors, um, you could always add some red berries or some red flowers to keep it really wintry and Christmassy. Um, but again, I just kind of wanted to keep it simple today. So as you can see, um, you start out with your circle and you just kind of layer upon layer upon layer. And so I used a few different stamps today, but um, really tried to keep it to green tones. Um, and you can see I added, um, I really wanted a snowy look to it. So I added a bunch of the white paint all around and then just did this cute little design of trees in the middle. So that's it, let's get started. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your watercolor paper and um, you're gonna take a circle of some sort. I like to use our circle dies um, and you're just gonna trace with your pencil. So this is about three inches um, across here and then I just took this smaller one and um, penciled in another circle inside. This one is about two inches. So, you know, there's no exact size that you have to use. It's really up to you. I will say that um, I would probably not recommend using a real, any bigger than this, just because it's harder to fill in. You know, it, it's just, um, you're gonna come out with a better project if you go just a little bit smaller. And plus, I always use this size of paper and um, I need space for my greenery. So this is about as big as I ever go. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm gonna take my big branch. So this is from the branches set. Uh, it's a few years old now, but wow, it's a classic. And I have used it many, 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 many times. I use it all the time. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, um, 969 and my 177 and typically if I really want like a rustic look to my wreath I'll just use the brown and go around um, but I kind of you know like I said I want to stick to the greens I want to keep it simple and so um, I want a little bit darker in there um, just for color variation but also want to kind of keep it to the green so I'm going to layer these two colors with this one first and this one on top and I'm just gonna go around my circle here. So if you put some brown in there before, it really gives you like a nice earthy green to it. Okay, so I got that on first, and then again, I got my 177. This is my warm green. And I'm gonna stamp this off first, just so that um, we don't get too dark of a image here. So I'm just gonna go here. Another one here, and I'm just flipping my page as I go around. Um, I might ink it again. So that was three times I stamped. You'll just have to kind of play that by ear. Um, when you start to not have enough ink, well, it's time to time to ink up again. So starting off with my brown 969, then my 177 on top. Again, I'm gonna stamp that off. And again, I'm just gonna go around here. And then one more down here. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like um, to begin. You know, you don't actually have to use a branch. You can save your branches until the end um, for more of like, um, just more of an accent so that you see them a little bit better if you put them in the end. But I like to use my branches as sort of a guide to put uh, where to put my foliage. So I like to do this first, but again, it's just, what is your style? What is your preference? The more you do this, the more you're gonna know exactly what that looks like. And that's not gonna be like anybody else's. It's really not, even though we use the same stamps and the same colors, your stuff is gonna look way different. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my fur bow, and I believe this is in uh, foliage set two. It's one of the early foliage sets. An oldie but goodie. 
you know? I love those classic ones. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my cool tone green. This is the Hunter Green. And this is, oh, <laughs> no, that's 177. I'm not gonna use that one again. Um, okay, here it is. So I'm gonna take my 249. Um, you can tell, let me show you these side by side. So the 177 is much more of a warm tone and the 249 is much more of a cool toned pen. So, okay, so I'm gonna ink this up and I'm just going to, you know, the thing about wreaths that I really like is that there's no like exact way to do it. You just, you add it in where you want and that's it. And there's no right way, have you seen, you know, if you've seen any wreaths in your life, you know, they kind of go every which way. So that's what I like. And I always am making wreaths during the holidays because it's just fun. Okay, so just continuing to add them just kind of wherever I want and just continuing to use this 249. And, you know, my only advice is make sure that when you stamp it, you're not doing it the exact same way every time you stamp. You'll notice like some variations in the way I'm doing this. Okay. So that's pretty good so far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna soften these lines because if you can see my project here, I've got a really nice um, background of very soft colors here. So like you can see all in here, that's all really mostly this stamp when I did this layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just really soften that up so we get that nice background. Um, because you can, if you can see here, when I use this vine, um, this large vine, I, uh, you, I really didn't pull the color too much out of it. I softened it inside with my number one brush, but, um, you can see I didn't really soften any of the other lines on these because I wanted these to kind of stick out and be really clear, dark images against the background of these, um, soft ones and watercolored ones. Okay. So I'm going to take my water. And my number four, oh, that's my number one. Take my number four brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and soften these. And I may add some more if I want. But let's just kind of see how this looks. Just a few of these in here. Just softening them up. And what we're what I like to do is when I do this, I like to bring this green out just a bit. And don't go over those um, branches too much. I know, you know, you just, you can't avoid it too much, but um, just try because we wanna still see that image. Okay, just gonna go around here. And you can see once you have that green on your brush, you can really kinda just drag it out. And you can see a little bit of the brown here from the branches, but it's not as overwhelming as if you just did the brown um, and if you didn't layer it in the green too. So I like that. I like a little bit of that rustic. Okay. So we're getting there. I'm gonna add a little more of these. Again, in my 249. That's the thing about this is like really like you just decide as you go oh I like that oh I don't like that oh I think it needs a little more of this or that and you're the artist yeah we're all using the same stamps but you're the artist of your own projects so you'll decide and you'll know what looks best so I'm just gonna kind of even oh then there goes my stamp <laughs> I just flicked that right on my lap. Has that ever happened to you guys? Wow, if it's if I'm not flicking stamps, I'm dipping my brush in my coffee. You know how that goes. Okay. Swinging this paper all around. Okay, I'm gonna add just maybe one more right here. Okay. And again, I'm gonna take my number four brush it off and just again just really soften this up bring this green out like how 
cute is this already? I just love like <laughs> the different variety of projects you can make with a wreath. And you don't really need that many stamps to do it. You know, you just need a few little foliages, a few different color pens, and you really can make like a million different projects. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna use, and these are all um, from the Bible journaling uh, foliage set, the next two that I'm gonna use here. So I'm gonna use this one, and this one's really cute to use with, uh, with these wreaths. And I'm gonna take a really bright green. I'm gonna use um, number 173. I just, I don't know, I just love these bright greens. With these more muted tones and I'm just gonna again put these wherever I want them to go anywhere I want and I'm mostly inking these every time but again you'll just have to play that by ear and you know if you need an area with a softer image then stamp it continue to stamp it more if you need an area that you need a little more definition then you can ink it every time. Like how cute is that already? Oh my, I just love it. I just love these really simple, simple projects. And you know, it's not intimidating to come to your desk, get out your stamps if you know you're just making something simple. You know, for me, I'm more likely to do that than I am you know, a really complex project that, you know, oh, I need my husband to watch the kids while I make it, or I need to plan out because it's going to take me this long. Like, I just like these simple ones. Okay, look at how cute that is. Oh my goodness, I just, I can't get over it. <laughs> okay, so, got a little water down in here. I'll just go over that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to add... Um, are a few more of these branches. And so for this one, I want them to be more accent branches. So I'm still gonna do the same brown first. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I'll do, I think I won't do the brown. You know, gotta love these ideas on the fly here. I actually have another green that I think would be very, very cute on this. So I'm just trying to get the ink off of this. So it will work for me. Okay, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna use this one. Okay, so this is number 228. Um, again, a different shade of green. And I'm just gonna ink it in this and add just a few little accent branches because we can see some, but I just, I want a few more. So there's one. You know, don't you love it when you can think of an idea just on the fly here? <laughs> you don't need very many, just a few. Again, this is number 228. And it's a really like nice uh, muted green. It's not gonna stand out as much as like a brown if you were to use that. Okay. How cute, oh my goodness. And I'm going to take some of that. Um, and you know, we never take our brush and go over the lines of like a branch or anything with like a single line. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of that 249 from my palette. And that's that hunter green. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in these areas a little more. I want a little bit more color. You can just kind of do that wherever you want. You know, like I said, there's no exact right way to make a wreath. Can I just tone down a little bit of this? It's whatever you like. Okay, we are getting so close. And now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in my, um, these uh, darker 
uh, vines here. And this is one of the bigger stamps in the Bible journaling foliage set. And I just, I'm gonna use this one actually. I love it. I love this one. And it's just perfect for a wreath. There's actually two included in the set. One that goes this way and then one that goes this orientation. So it's nice to just have both of those. When I'm using these big ones, like I rarely ever color the whole stamp. Like for me, it's just too hard to control that way. Um, but again, in the 249. And I'm just gonna, you know, I want these to stand out. And so I'm gonna ink them probably mostly like every time I stamp. And just, you know, turn your paper as you go up there and the nice thing about these is like you can see I'm still I'm using the same stamp every time but sometimes I'm yeah you know, I'm you know putting pressure on the whole thing and sometimes I'm just putting pressure on the top um, it's a nice thing you can get a really like um, varied look to your foliage by doing that even though you only you're still using just one stamp And just continue turning your page here. Just fill in whatever holes you want to fill in. How cute is that? Oh my. I'm just going to keep saying that and keep saying that. <laughs> If you guys have watched any of my other videos, you will know that I say that all the time because it just, it's just so cute when it starts to really come together. Okay, actually, I'm going to switch my brushes to a one. And um, you can see here that all I'm going to do is just kind of fill in here. So it's still gonna look soft, but we're also still gonna keep getting these accent pieces. You know, whereas normally I would take my brush and probably like, you know, soften all of this. I just, I don't want that same look for this. And you know, when you add water, these colors just really pop. And it's already designed, like, <laughs> the image is already there, so there's really no work to it. You just add a little bit of water. Like, how cute is that? Okay. Now, what we're going to do, uh, we're basically done with the outside wreath. And again, like I said in the beginning, if you like more colors, um, you could add in some more flowers here. You could add in some little berries, you know, with your fine tip of your mar or not your marby of your Tombow. Um, you could get the berries set and stamp in some berries in here. You could really make this more Christmassy if you wanted to. Um, but again, I'm going to keep it simple here just to show you another way. And so next thing I'm going to do, so we have our circle ready to go. So I'm going to keep this little image inside. I'm going to keep it right inside my little circle here. And when I'm done, I'm just going to erase it. But um, I just, I wanted something real cute in the middle that uh, kind of matches, you know, what we've been doing with our greens. Okay, so I'm going to take my tree. And I believe this is from the watercolor tree set. Um, and then I'm going to stamp that in, um, this 249. And I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to use my positioner because, you know, let's not, let's not risk it here. <laughs> let's not risk a floating tree somewhere or a crooked tree because, you know, that's happened to me also. Okay. So I got my positioner, I'm going to stamp it right in the corner. And then I'm going to decide, like, where do I want this? Just kind of right here in the center would be great. And if you notice, I stamped it twice. Um, 
And if you do that, and actually you can do it a little bit more too, you can make it a little bit bigger. And it looks like just a bigger tree, but you're still using the same stamp. Okay, and so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stab it again. I'm gonna take some of the ink off the bottom of the tree so that I can um, have just a little bit of a smaller tree, but again, using the same stamp here. Okay, and I think we want that probably right about here, maybe. Right about here. We want to kind of just, you know, leave equal sides in our circle. There's one, and then we're just going to do another one. We'll do it right here. Okay. Okay, so now we're inside our circle, and we're going to keep this whole little mini scene in the circle. And again, it couldn't be easier. So we got our tree stamp. Um, again, only one stamp to create these three trees. I'm just going to soften it up just a little bit. Okay. And now, I mean, that's really it to color the trees. Of course, we're gonna get our white paint um, and we're gonna add some snow to the wreath as well as to the inside. And that's gonna really like change the whole tone of our project. It's gonna really make it like just wintry and beautiful. And you can add, like <laughs> I added just a little moon here in the sky. Um, you can do that if you want. All, all that is is just making a circle with your blue and just coloring around it. So I'm taking my 565 from my palette and I'm just, I'm just gonna add a little bit here and there. And I'm gonna just go in here. I'm not really worrying too much about what exactly is, you know, on my brush as far as the greens go. Not worried about a little bit of green getting in my brush. I'm just gonna make these little snow areas. Take a little bit more of the blue, soften it up, soften these little lines up here. I love this 565 for snow. It's just really perfect. It's a very cool toned. Isn't that just the cutest thing? Oh my goodness. I just love this watercolor technique. <laughs> it turns anyone into an artist. You know, it just takes the stress away from the watercolor. Okay. How cute is that? So the next thing I'm gonna do, which is my last step, is I'm gonna add my bleed proof white. So if you guys don't have this, run and get it because it is so great. It's perfect for snow. You're probably tired of us talking about it, but wow, it really is that great. It really is. Um, I love how it just gives like a little bit of a different texture uh, to your project. So for these trees, I'm just adding just a little bit, a few little layers of snow here. So we moved, my family moved back um, to Oregon where we're from, or where I am from. My husband is Canadian and so this is my first you know, winter season without the snow. And it's just, you know, you kind of miss it when you haven't been around it. Now, if you would have said that to me that I would have actually missed it, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> you know, it's really fun for the first month. And then by the time it's April and May and there's still snow on the ground, it's, you know, can get a little old. <laughs> okay, so we're adding, I'm just adding a little snow to the ground. Just like the wreath, there's no perfect way to do this. It's just however you want. So I'm just adding some 
snow. You can do this or not do this. That's totally up to you. And so now, now that I got already my white paint on my brush, what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of the snow to the tops of my foliages. And it looks really, really cute. And you already have a guide on where to do it. You know, so this is like a, like a wreath that's on your door that's just full of snow. And this takes just maybe an extra minute or two, but wow, does it just make a difference? You just kind of make your way all the way around. Okay, and use as much or as little. I mean, you don't actually have to do this step um, for the wreath if you want kind of the main snowy feature of it to be the trees, but I think it really just kind of brings the two projects together. You could make a big lump of snow here too, you know, that the wreath may be caught. Making our way around. It just gives it like just another added dimension. You know, you just want to put it on top here. Just gonna continue this all the way around. You put a big lump on this branch right here. <laughs> you don't have to do it on every single one, but just whatever you whatever you like. bit. Can really add it down here. Maybe a few more here. And you want to make sure you have the right consistency with this white. Um, you know, it can get a little dry. Just add a few drops of water. Just start slow. <laughs> don't do, don't add too much water. Um, but just slowly rehydrate it if you need to. Okay, you guys. That is it. Last thing I'm going to do is just erase that circle that we did on the inside. And that's going to be it for our project. Nothing hard, just a lot of like easy techniques um, put together to create a fun little wintry scene. How cute is that? Thank you guys for either w just watching along with me or, you know, for those of you who are making yourself creating along with me, um, I really just always have a good time. So, you know, creating with friends. It's one of the best things in life, right? I'll hold it up for you. So good job if you're making this yourself. Excellent. Would love to see uh, your projects made. So, you know, post them on our social media, Art Impressions Facebook, um, either of the Art Impressions group pages. Um, always lots of encouragement there and lots of friends. So if you guys made this, I would love to see it. Just tag me in it or... You know, just post it on one of those pages and I'm sure I'll see it. 
So thank you everybody again for watching and we'll see you next time.